think I've been, I think the break would be really beneficial to our team just to, to give guys a rest and let their bodies kind of recover on a week off. I think a week is pretty much all we need just because pretty much this whole year we, we played a lot, but we really didn't play as much as we expected to do, expected to in the season just because the way we were beating teams. I think this week off will just give us a lot, just get our legs back and basically help us, especially when we have guys going in the training room and doing treatment and stuff all week and just taking care of our bodies. I think that's one thing that's going to help us on the back end. And all the way to the little left, Lori. Okay, not because of the matchup, okay? Not because of work with Steve or anything like that, but being number two, do you feel like you've got the respect that you've earned this year or no? I feel like our level of play um, and that we've come in and come out week to week. Uh, we've gained a lot of respect from a lot of teams and all over the country. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, we're, we're able to, to continue our season and keep trying to strive to get to what we accomplished in the beginning of the season. So it's a blessing. Uh, we will go uh, third row, uh, Dan Hope. Both of you guys, when you saw the matchup with Clemson, did you guys think back to the last time you played them, and do you guys use that as motivation or something to talk to the team about, about just how challenging this game can be? No, I don't think so, really. It's like, we, we know what we have on our team. You know, we know Clemson's a great team. We, that game that we played five years ago, is a, five or four years ago, it's, just, it's a whole different team. It's a whole new scheme, a whole new, lot of, a whole new different players. And, we're just going there to play our ball, you know, play Ohio State football. And I don't think, I think Clemson's a great team. I think we're a great team. So it's one thing that Coach Day said, when Tyler equates, then you can, yeah, there's no margin for error. And that's one thing that we have to do is focus on the little things and not worry about the, like, the whole big picture that everybody else sees, like Clemson versus Ohio State. We got to focus on what we got to do, like being focused on our P's and Q's pretty much. We'll go right in front, Steven. You two are among small amount of people who have playoff experience and like like understand like it's a whole different team and new players but like was there like a shock factor after that game in the locker room or like what was like the thought in the locker room after that type of game for um i think the biggest thing was just you know big 10 is one of the toughest conferences you can play in you know what i mean and just to make it to the big 10 championship and to win it back to back three times like we've done nobody has ever done that so it's one of those things where as this 2019 class, you know, we've aged ourselves in the history books. And, you know, it's something nobody can take away from us. But I think the biggest thing was just, you know, at that moment in time, it was, you know, we accomplished something great, you know, enjoyed a win for 24 hours. But at that moment in time, we knew that would that we would continue our season. So, you know, let's enjoy it. Let's get ready for our next mission. Uh, fourth row middle, Joe. You guys both came in with Damon Arnett, and he wasn't necessarily like a coach's favorite when he first came in. And Coach Day, Coach Hafley have raved about him. A lot of people have talked about his leadership. He's playing with an injury. How have you seen him progress from young Rico to now? Um, I think Rico has like he, he's mature. Like when we first got here at the year 2015, we had a lot of guys on our team that just weren't ready to be in that college football scene. We weren't we weren't prepared to go to class, play football. I think just people have that mindset, like, oh, I'm a college football player, now I can do whatever I want. And that, they, didn't have, they didn't know about the extra things they had, like going to school and focusing on class and football. And it, being able to split everything up and like being in a big city, big college team. I think Rico, one thing Rico's done this year is he's become a, a leader of the whole team, not just his unit, the whole team. You can see, you can feel him anywhere. In the, in a facility, we know when Rico walks in the room, we know that it's, it's, it's all about business now. And I think in previous years, he wasn't strictly about his business, but I, I can see this year that he's just a whole different person. He's he's all about the team. He's all about the brotherhood. He's all about playing for one another. He just, he's not selfish. He's not he's not thinking about what's what he's gonna get. He's thinking about the whole picture, like what the team's gonna get at the end of the day. We all had to mature. We all was a little bit immature. So that just comes with being an 18 year old kid coming to college, being on your own, and, you know, mentally, emotionally, we all had to develop and, and grow up, and that's one of the beautiful things about this program. You not only develop physically, but they develop you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as a uh, young man. So um, I give my hats off to Rico. I appreciate it for everything he's done, and, you know, he, he's you know, he's playing his tail off, and I appreciate it. You know what I mean? It's not a he, he knows and he makes us know that it's not about him. It's not about me and Jay Sean, it's about us as a team, us as a unit, us as a defense. So, you know, it's all love and you know, we all we we grind.
stride and we developed together. We went through our process with Coach Meyer together for the 15 class. So, you know, it's, it's been a, a, a unique uh, journey. It's been a special journey. So I'm proud of him. I'm proud of our class and I'm proud of our team for what we've done over these four or five years. Let's go to the front row, Austin. Jason, what was your first thought when you saw that you guys dropped to number two? Um, I, I had a, I didn't know, I didn't have a feeling, but like, you know, I feel like the media sometimes or people don't really give Ohio State the respect that we need. But we, we're ready to play. We don't care where we're at. We'll, we'll play in Oklahoma. We'll play. It doesn't matter where they, we're playing. We're gonna we're gonna be ready to play football. Now, it, number two doesn't matter to us. It's just it's just a ranking. We're still in the playoffs, so every, each team got lined up against each other to play. So. We're, just, we're ready to go play anyway. It doesn't matter where we're at. We're ready to just play ball. Right behind him, Rob. You guys, most of the season, or a lot of this season, were, I don't know if question's the right word, but this whole idea of you weren't tested, you weren't tested, you weren't tested, and you were tested uh, in three straight games. If you really look at it, uh, is it an advantage? Because Clemson really hasn't been tested that much. Uh, this whole idea of talent equates, they've got to face that against you guys. Can you use that to your advantage? Uh, I wouldn't, I'm not going to so much to say use it to our advantage because at the end of the day, you never know what's going to happen on a Saturday. You know what I mean? We got to suit up like they got to suit up. And, um, you know, the stakes are high. You know, we're playing for a national championship. And, you know, they're going to be ready to play. We're going to be ready to play. And, you know, those same questions, like you said, were being asked of us, you know, four or five, six weeks ago when we were rolling through some of our competition of once we hit adversity, how will we respond, how will we react. And um, it's one of those things Coach Meyer has preached to us all year. You know, when talent is equated, when adversity hits, you revert back to your training. And I feel like if we did it, oh, my fault, Coach Day. Who did I say? Coach Meyer. <laughs> I'm getting old, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> but uh, I feel like we've, we've done that very well. We've executed these past three weeks and when, you know, being able to show the nation that, you know, when adversity hits or you know, we're, we're, when we're behind the eight ball, we're able to bounce back properly like we should have. Uh, a couple more. Uh, Doug. Back what he said. Do you guys, um, in 2016, you're young guys, you were around, you guys were a great team, but you go out there and you lose 31 nothing. Did you feel in that moment a change in the program at all? Did you guys take it on yourselves of, we know we're great, but look, maybe this 31 nothing loss to Clemson showed we need to take it to the next level somehow. Was that a, did that send a message to this program at all, do you think? Uh, I wouldn't so much to say that just because it's, when we played Clemson in 2016, it was, just, it was a different era of Ohio State, you know what I mean? Uh, different players, different coaching staff, and uh, it was always, always been the same message, but I feel like the team that we are now is completely different from the team we were in 2016, um, even with the players that we had on the team. So I think it's just one of those things where, for us, 2016, yes, yeah, it's in the history books, but it's just that it's history. Right now, we got to focus on the present and get ready for this future game. Yeah, I feel like this year, um, previous to past years, this team, we're having a lot of fun out there playing for each other. And I feel like that's one big difference that we have from the past now. Like, when we get up on the field, we're, we're ready to play. We're going to play for one another, and we're having fun while we're doing it. That's one thing I can see that's different from this team. We walked in that locker room in the second half, or in the first, after the first half yesterday. We knew what was in front of us, and we knew that we were ready to go out there and play. And that's one thing that this team, so different about this team now, is that we're willing to lay it down for one another. We're, really, we're willing to die for our brothers. We're, all, we're ready to do anything to you know, win the game. And you guys talked about this tough big schedule, 10 schedule you played at the end of the year. Do you feel like, are you carrying the Big Ten name now into this playoff? A Big Ten team hasn't even scored a point in the playoffs since Ohio State won the national title five years ago. Do you, th do you feel like you're, you're trying to show people what Big Ten football is all about? Uh, for us, we, we carry, we're carrying the, the, the Buckeye name. You know what I mean? Uh, if people want to look at it as we're carrying the Big Ten into the college playoffs, then that's fine as well. You know, we appreciate the support. But at the end of the day, uh, we can't so much just focus on carrying the Big Ten as a whole, because that's a lot to carry us for sure. At the end of the day, we got to focus on carrying Ohio State into each game, each week, each play, each practice, because at the end of the day, we have to play in those games. We have to
have to perform, we have to come out and execute. And win, lose, or draw, we're going to get the praise or the criticism. So, um, you know, it's an honor to go into it being the only Big Ten team. But at the end of the day, we got to focus on playing Buckeye ball. Last set of questions, Joe? Just for either one of you guys or both of you guys, what was it like being in the locker room after that loss to Clemson way back in Fiesta Bowl in 2016? To be honest, I can't really remember. I do. And <laughs> it was rough. I blocked it out. It was rough. Uh, that was my first season actually playing as a freshman. Yeah. We actually, we actually played in that game, too. It was our redshirt freshman year, and I just remember, like, we put in <clears throat> so much hard work, and especially with – the group of guys that we had, and it was just like we just fell short, and it was one of those things we kind of asked some questions like, all right, what did we not do? What did we miss? What did we take for granted? Um, you know, we, we put so much blood, sweat, and tears into it to get to that moment and just get on the big stage and just didn't, didn't play the tune the way that we, we wanted to or that we should have. So, um, you know, it was one of those moments where for me, I'll never forget, but at the end of the day, it was. It's, uh, it's history, you know what I mean? You try to rewrite, you know, a, a new chapter in this in this book and see what happens. Were you guys surprised by that loss? Because two years ago, two years before sixteen, you guys were a national championship. You, you guys weren't there, but the program had been accustomed to so much winning. And to lose a game thirty-one nothing, I imagine would be shocking. Uh, I think it was more so disappointment, not so much as being shocked, just because we didn't perform to our ability. We didn't play to the standard and to the level that we knew we could have. So I think it was more so disappointment, not so much a shot. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.